Alright guys, it is Defking here, back with a brand new video, and guys, in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you about Context Action Service. Now, it's a pretty useful service, but before I explain it anymore, let me go ahead and show you exactly what it's going to do. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and start the game, and keep an eye on this little blue block right here, okay? If I go ahead and press C right now, it turns yellow, okay? That's pretty cool, I like it. <laughs> but basically, what that means is like, it it turns yellow, right? I mean, and, and it's only a few lines of code. So basically, it's how you bind actions to um, to buttons. And you can actually even use mobile emulators. So like this, like if I, let's say I was on my phone, right? And I, this is an emulator. I just went to test and I hit device. And then I'm on like an iPhone 5 or an iPhone, we'll do iPhone 7 Plus, right? And I started the game. What's going to happen is I'm actually going to have a button now that I created customly, and I actually put a little Pikachu icon for it. But um, if I go ahead and press that button now, it's going to make that it's going to make that green, right, uh, or yellow. So that's pretty cool. I mean, it, it's I like that. But uh, yeah. Anyways, that's what that does. Okay, so how do we do this? You may be asking. Well, let me go ahead and delete the script and show you guys. All right, so let's go ahead and go into a blank base plate. So I'll hit File New. And also, some of you guys are probably wondering, like, well, why don't you just use um, user input service? And I'm going to explain that actually just in a second here. I'll explain the difference between the two and why you should use one or the other. But anyways, let me go ahead and close the emulator for now. Actually, I'll keep it open. All right. So the first step to actually creating a context action service is making a local script because it's, it's sort of like user input service. So you need to actually make it sure it's a local script because you can't get input from a um, service script. So we're going to go ahead and make a local script. Okay, and what we're gonna do now is um, get context action, get context action service into a variable. Um, so a local context action service is equal to game get service context action service. There we go. And also, like I said, what's the difference between user input service and this one, or context action service? Basically, context action service is a game service that pretty much allows you to like bind user input to certain actions so you basically you're going to be using a, uh, a function called context action service bind action and basically it's how you bind actions to um to a function so let me just actually show you, show you the syntax and how it's going to look and then i'll um, explain it all i guess all right so first things first we need to make a function to actually uh define what we want this uh you know little guy to do so we need to make a function, right? Uh, or what we want our key to do. So for us, we're gonna make a little part right here, actually. And I'm going to give it a, just make it like that. And what we wanna do is we want to, first of all, obviously get the part. So we'll do local part as equal to game.workspace.part. And then we'll do part, or no, we'll do local function on, um, on button press. Okay, and now we're in this function right here. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to do part dot brick color is equal to brick color dot new, and then we're going to put in here new yeller. And it's pretty weird how brick color works. Like you can either change with a color or a brick color, but for this we'll just use brick color to keep it simple. But basically, you just do brick color dot new yeller because that's one of the colors as you can see here. I put it on there, you can see it's new yeller. I know it's a weird name for a color, but it, it is. So yeah. Anyways, now that we have it like that, we'll just uh, see like there. And now we have the actual function done, right? It, it, it's going to work. But now we need to actually make a button so that way if someone presses the button or the key on their keyboard, it will um, run this function. So how do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple. It's one line of code. All you have to do is do context action service colon bind action. Okay, now as you can see here, when I, when I type this in, uh, colon bind action, I have quite a few parameters right here, okay? Um, actually, wait, I just made it go away. First things first, I have the string of the action name. So we have to come up with a name for the um, for the action because if you ever want to access it or deactivate it, you need to have a name for it. So we'll name it like um, on our turn turn button or turn brick yellow. That's what we'll name it. Um, and then we'll do um, the function. So what function do we want to bind it to? Well, obviously this one, the on button press one. Okay. And then what um, do we want to create a touch button on mobile? And for this example, we'll do it. Yes. And then the input type. So do you want to have it? So or we well, actually this is I'm pretty sure this is a required function. Um, or not required. But basically, do you what do you want it to be um, for input on a computer? So yeah. Anyways, let's go ahead and do that now. So I'll type that in. And the first parameter, like I said, is the name. So we're going to name it turn brick yellow 
All right, there we go. And then we're going to put the function, um, which is on button press. And then we're going to remove the parentheses. You're not supposed to have parentheses when you pass through a function in here, so just delete those parentheses. It'll know that it's a function anyways. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and put the... Um, or do we want it to make a button for this? Yes, true. And then do we want it to have a key to make it, uh, you know, like actually turn different colors? So what key on your... Um, what key would it be on the computer? And for this one, we'll do a T, okay? Makes sense. So we're gonna put a T in there, a little lowercase T in quotes. And then now if we run the function or run the game, um, we should be in the emulator still, I'm pretty sure. And as you can see here, we spawn in, we have the normal mobile controls, and there's actually a little bit, there's a little button right here. It's a tiny little button. It's actually currently overlapping the jump button, which we will fix in a second, so don't worry. But as you can see now, I can run around, I can do all this stuff right here. All right, pretty cool, pretty cool. And um, basically this is, this is um, you know, just mobile controls, but now if I press this little button right here, the brick is now yellow. And now obviously we can make it so it would switch back and forth if we wanted to, but currently we just made it um, do one thing, which is turn it yellow and not turn it back. So um, yeah, but if we wanted to, obviously you just write out all the code there to make it do that. So yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, so now if we go ahead and disable the emulator, um, I can go ahead and actually just start playing the game. And what is, what is gonna happen right now is I can just press C, I don't have the button on my screen to look at some mobile players. I can press C, and it, if it would work, um, it's oh no, T, sorry, <laughs> not C. I'll press T, and boom, it's yellow. That's awesome. So, yeah, um, you may be wondering, okay, so let me explain now actually why um, you would use context action service rather than user input service. So, you might be wondering, like, okay, well, there's user input service where you can just do, um, you know, you could just do uh, you, user input service, uh, and then you know, input began, and then look for T, right? You can do all that stuff if you wanted to. Also, if you don't know how to use user input service, you should definitely watch my video on that. Um, link should be in the description. But yeah, anyways, you might we might be wondering why you would use this one instead of, um, or why you would use context, context action service instead of user input service. And the reason as to why is is because sometimes on user input service you don't always you don't always like want to have a button be doing something. Like for example, okay, if you had user input service set for T, okay, to for the letter T. So if it if it was like user input service colon input began, um, and then it, you would do like if player um, push down uh, the T key, right? Or then you would want to do something. But the thing is, what if the player's typing in chat and they're saying, hey, tell me how to play. As you can see, they typed in two T's there. They say the T for tell and the T for um, two. Now, what that would do actually is that would actually still count as a player pressing T, if you didn't realize that. It would still count as a player pressing T. So what, what you would want to do is um, you wouldn't want to like get confused with that and, uh, you know, get confused what I'm trying to say so yeah anyways also um like okay I'm gonna give you a good example of when you'd want to use it too uh, a good example of when you want to use it uh, or when it's useful to use um like if for example if you were getting into a car like okay, let's say there was a car right here let's say this is a car okay and you only want to get you okay you want to get in the car right and you want to make it so when you're close to it there, there's an action that says e to enter Right, you don't always want to be looking for T, because if you're always looking for T, then you have to check the position of where it is, see how close it is. But what you could do is just bind an action to it, right? And then you could just um, that way when you're close to it, right, or you're or a certain distance away from the car, you just press E, and then it'll get in. And then you'll bind the action to it whenever it's close. But then when it's far away again, you can unbind the action. So let me actually go ahead and show you what happens if I do that. Um, so if I go ahead and I'll put a weight like five. And then I do a context action service unbind action, and I'll do turn brick yellow. Um, what's going to happen now is I'm going to unbind the action, and it's not going to show as um, sorry. It's not going to like you know it's not going to be there anymore. So let's go ahead and test it out. But we're going to go on mobile because we want to see the button on the on what's it called. So we'll go on mobile and do it. There we go. And you can see right here, it's going to unbind the action for five seconds. So let me go and wait. You can see the button right there, and it's gone. See, it waited five seconds, and then it unbinded the action. So now, if I press C or T, nothing happens. Nothing at all. Um, it, it it doesn't do anything because the the action is now unbinded. So if you want to do something again, you could rebind it. That's what people do, right? Um, you just rebind it, and then you know you do that. 
Okay, pretty pretty simple stuff. I mean, not very not very hard. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's pretty much how that works. It, it's pretty cool how all this um, how this works. You can also use bind activate, but for this, well, I'm not gonna make it too confusing. I'm just gonna use um this. Also, uh, you might be wondering um how to change the um like okay like if you have this little button right here right you have this button right here um on your screen okay first of all it was touching the um sorry it was touching the jump button right so how you actually move it is you do um context action service set position and then you put in your parameters the first one um the first one is a string name and the second one is a position so the we'll do turn break yellow that's the that's the name of the action and then the position you do a udim2 value Udim dot new, and you do your scale offset y scale and then um, y offset. But basically, I'm gonna I'm not gonna do this right now because I actually have never taught you guys GUIs or yeah, I've never taught you guys GUIs in my tutorials. Maybe you know about them, but I've never explained them in my tutorials, so I don't want to um, confuse people who've never seen them before. But basically, you would just type in some numbers here, right? So we'll do like 0.7, um, and then we'll do like um, I don't know, like it. Uh, it, it's uh, there's there's I'm pretty sure I'm remembering right, but there's a way to like get it above your certain character or the the jump button. I forgot where it where it would be, but um, I think that's it. I I don't know, but as you can see here, I'm gonna go on here and it's going to be in a different place, and I actually don't did not type it right. That's my bad. Um, I forgot my actual parentheses, but it's I don't know where it's gonna be. I didn't like do all the I didn't have like the place set but as you can see it moved a little bit um, but yeah it does have the position that's pretty cool um, but let me let me move it somewhere better I don't know point two there you go that that should be better I think I mean it's gonna be in a weird spot now I think it's really like, top here wait what okay that that's not working I'm not really too sure why to be honest with you but anyways that's how you would do it maybe I, I I'm, the game's telling me not to show you right now anyways um, other thing about this is um, you can also overwrite other actions. So, for example, right here, if I wanted to, um, like, it, okay, okay, I'm gonna show you right now. Okay, I'm gonna change this to D. Okay, just the lowercase D. And now, if you if you realize when you move your character, right, you use W A S D, don't you? I mean, that's what that's what you use. You don't use like the arrow keys. You use W A S D. So, what's gonna happen is if I go ahead and actually bind that to D, what's gonna happen is it's, it's going to go ahead and not allow me to move on D. Wait, actually, I'm on a mobile, so let me turn that off real quick. But whenever I press D now, I'm not going to move. It's not going to make me move at all. This action is now overwriting the um, the movement key. So now if I press D, and actually, wait, I do move. Wait, what? This wasn't working earlier. I'm so confused. <laughs> um, okay, well, anyways, you, you see what I'm saying, right? But also, uh, one quick thing, too. If you press F9... And you go to up here to action bindings. You can see all of the actions that are binded. Right here, you can see that um, D turn break yellow the action name. Um, that that's our action right here that we binded, right? And you can also set priorities for your actions um, because if I were to like, what should be happening right now is it should be binding, and it shouldn't allow me to move. Um, I'm a little bit confused, both of you. Wait a minute. What is? Wait a minute. I want to. Why is that? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's supposed to be uppercase D, because I was just doing that, and it wouldn't let me move my D. But okay, you know what? I don't understand, but it's fine. It's it's fine. That's, I guess that's how it works now. Um, anyways, yeah. So there's other actions, right? Also, you can other write other. You can overwrite other actions. Like you can see right here on the wiki, it actually says um, uh, you can overwrite other actions. So if you want to have H key trigger a car horn um, um, the player might also type hello in chat and use the H key for something else and then it's hard to determine if the H key so basically you'd want to bind so um, yeah so yeah anyways but what it's saying here too is it will make sure that the H key presses the honk action when it's the most recently bound so if I were to also bind something again right um, to another to another like, key so I have, to, I have to make a whole new function, but if I were to bind something to turn brick red, right, on a button press, true, 
D I did the same thing, right? What's gonna happen is this one's gonna overtake it. This one is it's the most recently binded one because it's the bottom of the script. It happened the latest, right? So what's gonna happen is um, it's not gonna turn a brick. It's not gonna turn a brick yellow. It'll turn a brick red now. So let me actually make sure that works um, and make sure I'm not wrong. It's like, uh, well, let me ask something else. We'll turn local function turn brick. Um, button turn brick red. Okay, and then we'll just copy that, and then we'll do um. We're gonna find the name of a color. We'll do really red. Okay, uh, really red. There we go. And now that should work. I swear, if this doesn't work, I'm gonna be triggered. Not gonna lie. But um, and then if I were to bind that one again. Oh, actually, I'll show you in a second. But if I were to, okay, so it should go red, dude. What the heck is happening? It like, it's defying its own words. Yeah, I'm so confused. Oh, that's why I'm so dumb. I put in the um the on button press function. Okay, that's my bad. I really should have named it something better, but I just named it on button press. But um, I named that like, uh, um, button turn. Or actually, you can do fun. I don't know. I just named it. You can name it button turn brick yellow. That might be a little bit better syntax. But anyways, um, I put the wrong function. That's why it didn't work. But let me go ahead and play it again, and it should work. Let's see. And here we go. And press D. And there, see, as you can see, it's red. And the reason why it turned red instead of yellow, even though I just binded this action as well, is because, like I said, it's the latest bind binded function. So that's what happens. Also, one more quick thing. Um, if I were to unbind this function, so if I were to, here actually I'll do it right now. But if I were to go ahead and wait five seconds, and then and then I would unbind that function, or unbind the action, sorry, um, what would happen is um, this action would actually take place again. So this action's still running in the background, right? Well, it's not running, but this action would overtake again. And now if I if I were to press D again, it would actually turn a brick yellow. So you can watch right here. Um, so okay, so what what I did was I binded the two actions, but I binded the brick on the last. So I'll press D, and then it'll turn yellow, right? I'll press D again, nothing's happening. Or turn red, sorry. And now it turned yellow again because I pressed D again, right? Do you see what I'm saying? Um, and that's because I unbinded this action. So whenever you, if you have two actions binded to the same key, um, the, the latest one's going to be the one that works. But whenever this one's unbinded, um, this will now work as well. So you don't actually have to reactivate it. So yeah, hope that makes sense. All right, but yeah. Also, you can also you can also change the um, change the like the here, let me delete all this. You can change the um, like uh, set image. You can change the image for the e button, right? So you can change the image for this one. You just put in the or you do context action service colon set image, and then you put the name of the action, and then you put in an image, which um, I can go ahead and go in my toolbox right here. And I found it earlier. It was like a little Pikachu for yellow, right? Made sense. There it is. <laughs> and it it's now on the base plate. But let me go ahead and drag it into rep storage. And then I'm gonna oh no, I'll drag it into replicated storage. And then let me go ahead. What is hap? Oh, oh, what? Okay, you guys see this too, right? Like it now. It's I'm getting hacked. I'm getting hacked. Okay. Anyways, um, now let me copy this, and then you paste that in there. And that's like a texture ID. Also put that in quotes. And now, if I go back on mobile, what's going to happen is the button will be there, and it's going to look like that, right? So we're going to test that out and make sure that works. And as you can see, our button is indeed an image. And now I clicked it, and it turned yellow. Right? Makes sense. Okay, that's pretty much it. I don't want to make anything else more confusing. That's context, context action service. Very good for you when using mobile. Also, like, for example, if you wanted to reload a gun, that's a, it's, a, it's a great to use context action service. Because then whenever the tool is equipped, then you bind the action. And then if it's unequipped, then you unbind the action. Hope that makes sense, right? Um, that way you're not always looking even if the gun's unequipped. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, guys, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you're new for more awesome Roblox shipping tutorials. And, yeah, that's going to be it. I hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.